What's happening guys? Welcome back to the Ford Type Make It Loco channel. Today we're going to show you how to change the rear pads and rotors on your 2005 to 2007 Ford 500, Ford Freestyle, and Mercury Montego. Now this procedure also applies to the 2008 to 2009 Ford Taurus and Taurus X, which are basically a rebranded version of the Ford 500 and the Freestyle you see here. That was when they brought the uh, Ford Taurus name back into production uh, once again to save the company. Remember that? Now, believe it or not, this same basic procedure, torque specs and all, there's minor differences, which I'll note as we go along here, but the same basic procedure also applies to the 2010 through 2019 Ford Taurus, which is when they killed it off once again. Uh, so this is going to cover a lot of models and a lot of uh, model years out there to help you guys fix your rear brakes yourself. Now, the procedure is very, very simple. The only special tool you're going to need, which is pretty much normal down nowadays, pretty much common, is a tool like this, which will actually turn in and compress the rear brake caliper. You cannot use a regular C-clamp. These have integrated parking brakes into the caliper. Um, so you're going to need this tool, which I'll list that down below, along with all the torque specs and the parts and everything you need uh, to get this job done and get it done right. Let's get started. All right, so the very first thing you want to do is jack the rear of the vehicle up on the pinch weld right here. You want to set it down on some jack stands, nice and safe, chock the front wheels so it doesn't roll away on us, and then we can proceed with changing the rear brakes. First thing we're going to do is take off the wheel. The lug nuts on here are going to be 19 mil. All right, now because it's a little hard to film and, and work in this tight area and show you in good detail what's going on, I'm gonna bring you in close, show you what to do, and then we're gonna pull you back and let you see it all happen in real time. So the first thing you wanna do is start taking off your brake caliper itself. In order to do so, there's a 13 millimeter bolt right here and right here, okay? So we'll unbolt that. And then we're gonna take a pry tool, we're just gonna pry it on a little bit and get it off to the side. Remember, you cannot compress these in with the regular C-clamp. And then we're gonna work on getting the caliper bracket itself off of here. The caliper bracket is held down with two 15 millimeter bolts, one right there, and then there's one down there, you see them right there. Once you unbolt that, we can take off the pads and the bracket itself off to the side, uh, so we can go ahead and clean it up and prepare it for the new pads and rotors on here. Once all that's out of the way, your rotor is free to come off. Now, most of these rotors are going to have a bolt, like somewhere like right here or right here, uh, that's going to be that's going to hold it on. It's going to be T45, T47, somewhere in that range. Uh, if yours has it, you need to unbolt it, and then we'll simply tap on the rotor, break that rust bond with the hub, and then that will come right off too. We'll do some cleanup on the bracket and the hub itself and then we'll start laying down new brake components and I'll walk you through all of that. Uh, the one thing, like I said, we're going to have to do is turn in the uh, piston on these uh, to make sure that they go all the way back in and align with the new brake pads. That's a critical step and I'm going to walk you through that so you don't mess it up. Very, very important. Let's step back and watch it all happen. All right, here we go. So first things first, 13 mil on these bolts right here. And we're gonna do all this in real time here. These ones are rusted, so it's a little hard to get on there, uh, but they are 13 mil. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen them. I just use a regular gear wrench like this. Makes it nice and easy to get in here because it is tight uh, with the lower arm there in the way. So, you get these on here. Whew. These are rusty. Now this vehicle, you know, it's an 06 freestyle and it has 50 some thousand miles on it. So everything is rusted on here. It's the worst thing you can do for your vehicle is to let it sit. And you can see the brake hoses and stuff on here. They're starting to rot and split too. We'll be taking care of that at a later date for the customer when you have more money. So the caliper's unbolted at this point. We're gonna use a regular pry tool like this, and we'll just get in there. 
a little top, a little on the bottom, and it should come right out like that, okay? And then you put this up and off to the side, and we'll concentrate on this itself. Now, a good check right now is to try to pull your, your pads out. If your pads will come out like that, you know there's not much rust in here uh, causing them to seize. You can pull your clips out if you want right now. These are all pretty easy. And yeah, let's see the inside one. Yeah, it's not too bad. As rusty as it is, uh, it's all coming apart. And the other thing you want to do is grab your, your guide pins, give them a little spin, and plunge them and see if they're seized too. These ones just feel a little dry, uh, but they're not seized. So let's go ahead and get this caliper bracket off of here. It's a 15 mil. Uh, so we'll... The problem with these bolts back in here is that they're so hard to get to. Uh, and they're, they're torqued pretty good. It's like 80 some foot pounds. So excuse my uh, reach here, but... Yeah. Yeah, someone's been in here. And another tip I can give you is because uh, you don't want to take both these bolts out just yet. You want to loosen them all the way uh, and then take them out together. Because if you take one out and then you're trying to wrench on it, this thing will just kind of flop around on you. So kind of loosen both these bolts at the same time until they're ready to come out and then you can take them out. Because these, uh, from the factory anyways, they have a lot of blue Loctite on them. So it's hard to use even like Milwaukee ratchet on them because it'll kind of bind up. Air ratchet, it all kind of binds up. What I did want to try in this one though is one of the newer Milwaukee uh, ratchets like this right here, the extended reach ones. But it's the heavy duty ones that have a lot more torque. I think it's uh, something like 55. See if I can get in here. Yeah, see, that one does it. Let's see the standard Milwaukee does it. That's uh, three eighths, which is this one. It's just a lot of Loctite on there, and it kind of starts vibrating, binding. See, see how it stops. That's why it's good to have these heavy-duty uh, ratchets like this, extended reach or not. It can really be a time saver. I mean, otherwise, with a tight space in here, you have to do it by hand, and I'm not used to doing stuff by hand, uh, not in a professional shop environment like this. So that Milwaukee ratchet's a real time saver, heavy duty like that. All right, so at this point, just kind of lay off to the side. We have a bracket out, we'll take, take it to clean up. All right, now with the brake caliper bracket gone, our rotor is free to come off of here. Now, like I said, if you have that bolt, that Torx bolt somewhere in here, you'll see it. Uh, T45 or T47, you want to go ahead and zip it off of there, and then we can start beating the rotor off. This is the time, if any, you want to use uh, safety glasses for sure. The idea here is to break the bond of the rotor to the hub. Uh, and there's a whole hub behind here, so there's a lot of surface area to create a bond with rust. Uh, so you want to strike it here, here, you know, kind of over here. Avoid your studs, of course. Uh, we're changing the rotor anyways. So it doesn't matter. And this is pretty bad considering this rotor is not original. Um, shouldn't really be sticking that bad. I'm pretty sure you didn't use any anti-seize. If they did, they used a very small amount. Here and here. When right here and here are the contact areas. So with the rotor off, we can go ahead and put the scrap pile. All right, now it's time to clean up the hub right here, the face with the flange. Uh, so our rotor sits nice and flush on here. And then we're also gonna start cleaning up the caliper and the face of the caliper and all that. And then we're gonna screw it back in there. Uh, so it'll be ready to accept our new pads. 
All right, now as far as prepping the hub for the new rotor, what you wanna do is get the rust off this ridge and this ridge right here. This one's pretty minor, but you wanna clean it off. And then we're gonna apply a light coating of anti-seize on there uh, so it doesn't grow rust on there once again. And future brake jobs will be much easier. Little wire brush action in the center here. All right. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this out of the way. We're gonna use some brake clean. That's empty. There we go. And then we're just gonna take that. Yep, that's where the old uh, screw was at. Someone in the past chopped it off of there. So we're just gonna go ahead and clean it up real quick. And then we're gonna lay down some new anti-seize. This is the way to do it. You can get, prevent warpage of the rotor and a lot longer life out of the rotors in general. If they have a nice flat surface, they're bolted to on here. Oh, it looks beautiful. I like to use a little bit of the compressed air. And then we'll put a little, we'll put a light coating on here. Put a little heavy right here, and then we'll smear it around the rest so that we can't get to. You want to avoid the studs on here. You don't want anti-seize on the actual studs and threads. Uh, so we're avoid those. So we're going to put it a little heavy in the center. We want to do the centering of the hub here. That's how these wheels center on the hubs. And then we're going to take the anti-seize and just kind of spread it around to the areas we couldn't get to before. It's a little heavy, but you get the same basic idea. And this will protect it from any rust growing underneath there by the rotor. All right, make sure you clean your studs in case you got any on there that we can get the new rotor. Now, before we get to the rotor, let's concentrate on the caliper. We need to clean it up, and we need to turn that piston back in. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean it up. Uh, you like to use a wire brush like this. Just be careful of the boot on here. And we're gonna clean the ears, okay, as best you can. And get the excess rust off of there. And then we're gonna get the face of the piston here too. Now, a lot of times, it's like this one, like I said, it's been sitting so long, we need to use a cleaning disc like this to clean it off on there. All right, now it's time to turn this piston back into the bore here, into the housing. Now, a very important note here is that on the 05 to 07 500s Freestyles Montego and the Taurus and Taurus X of 08 and 09, the calipers are turned in a little bit differently than uh, the 2010 through 2019 Taurus, okay? So for the 05 to 2009 models, the passenger side here is turned in 
and counterclockwise. Whereas the driver's side is turned in clockwise, like any other brake caliper with integrated parking brake out there, okay? For some reason, on these models 05 to 09, the passenger side caliper needs to go in counterclockwise and in, okay? So I'll demonstrate that right now. So basically, I use this tool and the adapter that fits in these notches right here. I'm hoping you can see all this. Yeah, you guys can see it. There's a notch here and a notch here. So you, the tool's gonna be the same no matter what, uh, but there's comes with different adapters with nubs on them that fit in here so you can actually turn it. So these ones seem to fit perfectly. Okay, so the number six on here. I think a number seven also works. Um, so we're gonna grab our tool and we're gonna put it on here just like this. And then we're going to get it in here. This one's pretty far out. These brakes are pretty worn. So we're gonna sneak it in here and we're gonna get it lined up with those nubs on the piston. And once I get it aligned on here, I'll show you. Okay, so you can basically see it now. You can see the tool is on here, the adapter's on here, and we're in the notches right here uh, of the piston face. Now this is the passenger side, so we need to turn this forcing screw counterclockwise, okay? So we basically need to just go, I mean this uh, right here is parking brake cable will help you. Oh yeah. Here's the thing, you need to keep force going in while you're turning to uh, the left on the passenger side here. So it's a, it's a complicated process on here. Luckily, the parking brake cable uh, kind of helps you with this. We're going to turn these to the left. And we're going to turn, turn, turn. This little adjuster right here is actually what keeps force on it uh, to release the mechanism inside of there. So that you can turn and push it in. Want to snug up enough on there, have some pressure, and then we'll uh, continue turning it. What I found to work kind of nice is like a half inch extension like this slips right over it and gives you a bit more leverage. Just make sure you're not pulling on the uh, the brake hose here. Also, a rag around it will help you. And this is these are pretty tough. I mean, I'm no small guy, and these things are they're pretty tough. So. Generally, the first couple turns are the hardest, uh, and then it'll start to loosen up on there. You know, things start moving. Remember to, to keep tightening this so it keeps pressure going in. But yeah, it's a fight. But remember, just remember on the 05 uh, to 09s, it's counterclockwise on the passenger side only. They had to be different. And it's going in. I mean, this thing keeps loosening, which tells me it's definitely going in. Let's keep it straight and use this to keep the pressure on there just enough. And that'll help it go in faster. Now, I guess in theory, you could, you know, mount up the brake caliber bracket and mount this to the bracket and everything else to kind of do this. Uh, but it's, it's fast enough this way to just do it by hand. Continually tighten this or else you're just gonna be spinning. You won't be actually turning in 
Got to keep that pressure. See, like now you see I'm turning it much easier uh, now that the thing kind of broken free. And it's a process. These are one of the hardest ones to turn back in out of all the ones I've ever dealt with with integrated parking brakes. Uh, but they're doable. It's definitely the most tedious and time-consuming part of the job. Definitely. Now, once the caliper piston is fully pushed back into the caliper housing here, what you need to do is align those notches on the piston with this window right here. So what you're gonna do is take the tension off of it so we can just spin it free wherever you want. And then we're gonna turn it until the notches in the piston match up with the window on here. Something like that. And the reason for this is you want the nub right here and the inner pad to line up with the, the notch in the caliper, okay? So when you're done, you want to align these two notches with this window right here, okay? So when this pad goes in here, it's gonna lay in there just like this on the inboard side, and you need this nub to line up with that notch in there. So if you put it in here, and it's just kind of like that, you can see it's like kind of cocked in there. If it's lined up, it'll lay in there nice and flush all the way around, okay? Just like that. And that's where you need to align these. So it'll look just like this at the end, lining up with this window on here. And then when you go to put the caliper on at the end, everything will just line up and it'll drop in and it'll be flush all the way around. Very important, okay? So this one is pushed all the way in at this point, and you can see it's lined up with that window on there. So at this point, this caliper is ready to go, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna use some brake clean on a rag, and we're just gonna clean the ears on the inside here, and then of course clean the face on here. The last item we need to clean up for reassembly is this brake caliper support bracket. Now you can see why. I mean, there's a lot of rust in these channels that hold the brake pads. And if you don't clean that rust out of there so the pad can move back and forth freely, it's gonna cause a lot of issues like noise issues, glazing issues, premature brake wear, a lot of issues. So you wanna get this rust out of here and get back down to the base metal. For a lot of you out there, you can just use, use a wire brush and kind of scrub in there and get down to that base metal. Uh, but we're here in the salt belt of America, the rust belt of America, so we're gonna have to go a little more extreme and actually grind it out of there. I'll show you that method also. While we're in here, we need to go ahead and uh, remove our caliper guide pins. First thing you wanna do is make sure they can spin and plunge. This one seems just fine. Good to go. So you can go ahead and just pull it all the way out and the boot will come off of there. And we can get in there and remove the old grease and apply new grease. And then you simply stick it all the way back in there until it pops and then give it a spin to make sure it's sealed up all the way around. For right now, let's just go ahead and concentrate on this channel. It's the most important. So like I said, you can use a wire brush like this and get most of it off. Uh, whereas for me, I'm gonna have to use a grinder like this get in there and get those multiple layers of rust off all right so let's go ahead and do it the way you want to do it is you just want to use the grinder be extra careful safety glasses on and it's kind of drag it across we're not pressing down at all we're just dragging it across getting the layers of rust off. There we go. You can check it out on there. All the layers of rust are off on there. And now I can just use a simple wire brush or 
cookie wheel on there and finish it off. You don't want to take too much material off uh, because you will actually cause a clunking noise in the brakes as they go forward and backwards. There we go. It does not have to look pretty. If you make it look pretty, you're gonna take off too much material and cause that clunking issue. So right there, you can see her back down on the base metal on here. And we can go ahead and put our anti-seize on here and our new clips here in a second compared to this side. Yeah, so that is the idea behind that. Do the same thing on the other side here. And then we'll take our compressed air. brake clean we'll spray it onto the rag just like that and we'll clean those surfaces off on there it's a real quick cleaning and that'll get it ready for that let's go ahead and pull these pins out like I was showing earlier you want to take them out one at a time some have that uh, uh, vibration dampener on there the rubber uh, you want to make sure it goes back in the right spot. So you want to take them out one at a time. So we'll take them out so they're clean like that. If these are rusted or seized at all, you may want to invest in a new bracket and pins on there uh, because it's just a real pain to get out. So we'll put some of this uh, XG12 or XG3 grease on here, uh, silicone brake grease from Motorcraft. Let's put enough on there like that. And then we'll pop it back into the bore. So it pops. We're good to go. Same thing on this side. Generally, these boots are okay. Uh, but you can see on this side, like I was saying earlier, you can tell it's dry. It's not rusted, but it was dry. Look at how dry this side is. Sure enough. Uh, but it's not rusted. And there's no rust buildup, so it'll be a real quick cleaning on here. And I'll put some new grease on here. Just a little smidge like that. And we'll move it around and then these will pop back in and it'll be all sealed up. Good to go. We got any excess on here. All right, now for these, uh, these channels on here, what you want to use is some anti seize. And I just use nickel anti seize on there. And then I'll prevent moisture, you know, water and salt and everything else from getting trapped between this and these little anti-rattle clips and accelerating rust. Okay, I'll protect the metal that's bare underneath here now. So let's put a light layer on there and we'll smear it around with our hands, our finger, and that'll just protect it underneath there. This is the proper way to do it. Yes, there's a lot of cleaning, there's a lot of steps to it, but you know what, it's gonna last a long time. So we'll go ahead and we'll just smear it around on here and make sure you put your finger in the middle here, right through here, because that's where the rotor's gonna go. Uh, so you don't want a big glob of anti c sitting there um, contaminating the rotor. So make sure that's clean after you do this, like this side. You can see there's way too much. So I cleaned it off on there. So let's put a layer underneath there, and we can start applying our clips. All right, so the next thing we need to do is put our anti-rattle clips into the, the channels here. So what you want to do is you want to look at them, okay, where it sticks out, like this ear right here sticks out. That needs to go outboard, not inboard towards the rotor right here. It needs to go outboard. So you just need to look and see where it fits. So it looks like it goes here. And you can see it's going to snap in right here. Okay, just like so and it's not gonna be sticking into the center here where the rotor rides. And there's little ears on either side so it makes sure that it actually centers on there for you. Okay, good to go. Let's grab another one of these. And we'll show you how to not install them. Let me get one that's... Okay, so like this one right here, you can see the little ear sticking out. 
if you go to install it on the wrong side, it'll snap in and everything. It'll look good to go. Let's get it centered on here. There we go. You can see it snapped in right here and here. Everything's good to go, right? But look at the center here. You see it right here? Yeah, that's gonna touch the, the rotor in there. So you gotta make sure they're installed just like this one, flush, and the other part sticks out over here, outboard, okay? So the correct one for this one is this guy right here. Once it's all centered in there. And that's how it should look, outboard and outboard. Inside here for the rotor is free and clear. So go ahead and do that on both sides and it'll be ready to go. Everything on here is pretty simple. It's just a couple things like I'm pointing out now with you uh, that you want to be aware of. So you can just do it once and do it right. This is especially helpful for those of you out there that never done a brake jet before, uh, especially in this model. Here we go. Everything's good to go here, 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 and here. These are lubricated. Everything's ready to go. Let's go back to the vehicle and start putting the new brake components on. Time for reassembly. Now the rotor that I'm using is from Motorcraft. It's coated on both sides. These ones do not require any cleaning before putting them onto the vehicle. If you have a standard bare steel rotor, you need to clean off the oil all over the surface on here before you put it onto the vehicle. If you don't, it'll contaminate the new brake pads and cause noises and smoking issues, all kinds of issues. So you wanna use some good brake clean and a nice clean paper towel and just douse it on here and then clean that oil off of there, both sides, okay? The next thing you wanna do is line up your bolt hole for the, the capture bolt on here with the hole in the hub on here. Mine, of course, got sheared off by the last person that did brakes, so we're not using it. But if you were, like mine's right here, I think, you would simply take that hole and line it up with it. And then you take your little bolt, you screw it into here, snug it down, and it'll hold the rotor for us. If you don't have that bolt or you're not reusing the bolt, you simply take a, a lug nut and we'll just spin it all the way on here. What's nice about this is it holds it from flopping when we're trying to put all these other pieces onto here. Okay, so that's good to go. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the uh, brake caliper support bracket. So we're gonna take our two 15 millimeter bolts and we're gonna put some blue Loctite on here. Don't worry, I'll be listing all this information down below uh, so you guys have it. And then we're simply gonna lay it over it and we're gonna screw them in from the backside here. Let's get your caliper out of the way. And then we'll simply get in here and we'll thread them in by hand. Always a good idea to thread these in by hand. A couple threads, make sure they're actually going in and not cross threading. Just like so. And let's see if we can use the Milwaukee to tighten it back up on here. So we'll take it and we'll just snug it down. Top and bottom on here. Okay. And then we're gonna take our torque wrench and tighten it down to 81 foot-pounds. That is the correct spec on these. And this is the one where you really wanna to torque it down. Uh, a lot of guys just go by feel, but for me, for customer vehicles like this, it's getting torqued. Either way, if you tighten down these two 15 mil bolts, nice and tight, with a regular 3 8 ratchet, and then the blue Loctite's on there, it's gonna help uh, so it doesn't back out on you. Make sure all your clips are still in place. Good to go. 
And then we can take our brake pads and we can start laying them in the brackets here. All four brake pads are the same. So you want to come in at an angle like this, not straight, angle. We're going to press in on these two clips right here that keeps tension on the brake pads. And then they're going to slide right in. That's how easy they should go in. You should not be fighting them to get them in there. If you are, you're probably binding on these clips or you didn't clean enough rust from the uh, bracket here. Same thing on the back side. Get your head back in here and make sure you're doing it right. Okay, a little spin, sounds good. That's the regular pad dragging on the rotor, perfectly fine. Okay, now we're gonna take our caliper got wedgered back there. We're gonna take it and we're going to lubricate it, okay? Now, the, the pads for years on these, these models had this adhesive backing on them where you had to pull off like a label back here and they were sticky, okay? I don't see those anymore. They're regular brake pads like these. So if you have regular brake pads like these ones with no adhesive in the back, you need to lubricate the ears on the caliper and the face of the caliper with the same thing, the XG3A grease. And this prevents any kind of brake noise. So we'll go ahead and we'll just put some on the face of the piston here. That's all ready to go. And the same thing on these ears right here. Okay, make sure it's nice and even. Clean your fingers off. And then we'll go ahead and we'll lay this thing on here nice and straight. It should slide right onto there. Our notch in our brake pad and our um, caliper is gonna line up and everything should just fall right into place. Get your bolts and thread them in by hand. You might have to wiggle it like that a little bit to get them going at first. Very, very important or else you're probably gonna cross thread them. So do it by hand. Now, I gotta find the other bolts, which I misplaced, of course. Not there. she blows and we'll do the same thing down here get them all lined up now you'll notice on here the ears for these uh, these uh, guide pins are basically horizontal they're like this they're not like this or like this the ears are basically horizontal like this and that'll make sure they can uh, align them there properly we'll take our 13 mil now the torque spec on these on these 13 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper guide pins and the caliper is around 23 foot pounds. I always do these by hand. I want to feel we're not binding and I want to make sure that we're actually tightening them properly. So these I will always use a, a, a gear wrench like that. It gives me the right amount of leverage and then I will snug them down. I like to feel they're snug down. It gives me a sense of security that I know these things are tightened properly. Going down the road. Yep, there we go. Okay. So as a final post check, while everything's back together, let's look it over, make sure everything looks right. And then we're also going to spin the rotor. That's all you should hear. A little bit of drag from the pads against the rotor face, and that's it. No squealing, no crazy noises, no, no rust noises, nothing like that. So at this point, our caliper is bolted up properly. Our caliper guide bracket is bolted up and torqued. We can go ahead and pull this guy off. All right, let's get the wheel back on. Just get lined up with the studs on here. Push in the center, hold the bottom. And we can go ahead and get our first lug nut on, thread it by hand. I like to put the impact on there. 
just kind of snug it up. And then we can start putting the rest of these on here. What you want to do is thread these on, you know, three, four threads by hand so you can get a good feel for it. Make sure you're not cross threading. And then we can go ahead and just snug them down with the impact. Star pattern. And it's snug enough for now. Uh, and then once we get it on the ground, we can torque these again in a star pattern to 100 foot pounds. At this point, this side is done. Repeat the same exact steps for the other side. But remember, on the driver's side caliper, you twist it in clockwise. Passenger side is counterclockwise. Driver's side is clockwise on the 05 to 09 uh, vehicles. Once the brakes are done, both sides, the vehicle's back down on the ground. Wheels are torqued. You want to go into the vehicle, start it in park, and then hit that brake pedal a couple of times, all the way down and all the way up, nice and slow, until you get a nice firm pedal. The pads and the the the, um, the piston has to come back out and take up all that slack that's in there right now. So you need to keep the vehicle in park while you're pressing in the brake pedal until you get a nice firm brake pedal. At that point, with everything back together, torqued down, you can go for a test drive. Go for a test drive, kind of go through the curves and listen for any weird noises in the brake system while you're using them and when you're not using them to make sure everything's okay back here. Come back after the test drive, do a nice visual inspection, make sure you're not overheating or anything weird, and then do a final torque of the wheel lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds once again. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.